Okay, we're going to have a look at um, galvanising of iron first of all. So you need to consider a piece of iron here. And, whoops, iron. And we know that iron will rust if it comes into contact with oxygen and water. And when it does that, Fe reacts with oxygen to form Fe2O3, called iron oxide. I'm just going to balance that. Uh, and that stuff there, the iron oxide, here, forms a coating around the iron, which is that orange, brown, red, crumbly stuff, which isn't very good, um, and it, because it makes the, the iron break apart. What we can do is, if we have some iron, we can coat the iron in a very thin layer, far thinner than it appears there, of zinc. And we do that by dipping it in molten zinc and then letting that solidify. The advantage of this is that, first of all, it acts as a barrier. The water and the oxygen can't get into the iron. But secondly, and this is the really cool thing, is that if you end up getting a scratch in that zinc surface, now it looks as if the oxygen and the water can reach the iron. But the cool thing is, because the zinc is more reactive than the iron, the zinc is more likely to react with the oxygen to form zinc oxide. That does happen. The iron, we think, should react with the oxygen to form iron 3 oxide, but it doesn't. And that's because, remember, the zinc from the reactivity series is more reactive than the iron. So just to recap, it works first of all as a barrier method and then secondly, let me write that down, one, it's a barrier method. Secondly, even if it's scratched, um, the zinc uh, oxidizes or reacts with oxygen in preference to the iron. It sacrifices itself. So the galvanizing, this process of galvanizing, of coating the iron with zinc, is results in zinc sacrificing itself for the sake of the iron. Um, we can take that one step further and consider um, it's going to be an oil rig in the sea. And there's the drill going down into the ground. And there's all your bits and pieces on the oil rig. Now the oil rig itself is going to be made out of iron because it's a, a cheap metal, it's a strong metal, but of course what we've got here is we've got water, we've got oxygen in the water because remember fish live in the water and they need oxygen and we've got the the biggest contributor to um, speeding up that reaction uh, of rusting, we've got salt. So that's a terrible combination for the iron. Um, it would be nice if we could coat the whole of the oil rig in zinc but considering the size of the oil rig, uh, it would cost a huge amount of money to put zinc all over here. So instead what we found out we can do is we can simply attach blocks of zinc. It doesn't even need to be in the water. Blocks of zinc on the iron. Or even it could be attached by a cable. We've still got, therefore, that choice of zinc or iron reacting because the zinc is more reactive than the iron, it's the zinc that corrodes first. So what's going to happen after a period of time is this zinc is going to start turning into zinc oxide, and it's going to turn into zinc oxide, and it's going to turn into more zinc oxide. After a while, that zinc here is going to have all turned into zinc oxide. If that happens, then of course the oil rig isn't protected anymore, because there's no zinc to react in preference to the iron, and when all that zinc is gone, the iron then starts to corrode. So if you're in charge of an oil rig, the key thing is to keep an eye on these zinc blocks. And if those zinc blocks have virtually gone, then you add a new one to replace it, making sure that the iron is always protected. So the key thing is that zinc, even though it's not in contact with the water, still sacrifices itself for the iron because, again, it's more reactive. 
that is called sacrifish sacrificial I'm spelling that wrong sacrificial Okay, hope that helps. I don't know if anyone spotted my deliberate mistake. Um, the deliberate mistake is here. The formula of zinc oxide isn't ZnO2, it's just ZnO. That's all.